Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob and today I'm going to be unboxing uh, this monster, um, Gloomhaven 1.1. Gloomhaven Canadian Edition. Blue Haven? I don't know, those are all pretty cheesy, right? We're playing, we're, we're, we're unboxing Frosthaven today. We officially got it. I got it late yesterday, um, so I scheduled this unboxing stream. Because some people like to see unboxings. Uh, the main reason for this stream is because too many people have been messaging me since they got their copy saying, why haven't I got a playthrough up so they can watch me to make sure they're playing it right and know how the game works and all those kind of things. Um, yeah, no, I just got it. Uh, I backed it just like you. Uh, I'm just a regular gamer. I just know how to hook a camera up to my computer and click live on YouTube. Um, yeah, we backed this, so full disclosure, this was not provided to us by the publisher. Uh, this is not a review copy, this is not a promotional copy, this is just, we're fans of the game Gloomhaven and Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. We played them on the channel, we like the games. Uh, and this is the sequel to Gloomhaven, so we're excited to play it, so we backed it. Uh, we spent money. Uh, thank you to these awesome people right here. These awesome people right here for supporting the channel and allowing us to back projects like this and, and play them for you guys on the channel um thanks for the donations to help us get better cameras computer equipment audio equipment travel to conventions buy big kickstarter games all that kind of stuff spend weekends playing games for you guys live on the stream um so yeah yeah hello everybody hello to those joining in the chat hello hello yes i know it's about time we got it i know I know, there's still people in Canada still receiving it. There's people in the US who still don't have it. There's people all around the world who still don't have it. Uh, it started shipping out in December. We are here now on February 17th. I did call it last year. I called it last year on a stream. And when they said pe most people will start getting it later in 2023, I said, I, I doubt we'll see it till March. And I was almost right. I was two weeks off, two weeks off from getting it in March. Um, so yeah, we finally got it. So this is to shut the people up who've been asking, where's the game? Where are the videos? Where are the playthroughs? Why haven't you done it yet? I'm unsubscribing. I thought you liked this game. How come you're not playing it already? How come you didn't get a copy from the company? Blah, 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 blah. Go away. Anyways, so now I have it. Uh, we're going to unbox it. Uh, after the stream, I'm going to sort it all out. I'll talk about a bit about what storage solution I'm using. We'll show some of that. Um, also, uh, Mel's going to paint it. My wife, who paints our miniatures for the stream, she's going to be playing this game with me. Most people around here know we're a playthrough channel, live playthrough channel, uh, mainly. So I'm more excited to play the game. So we're going to sort it out. We're going to learn it. We're going to paint it. And then we'll do some playthrough streams. So if you're interested in playthrough streams, hit subscribe, stick around. Because um, those will be coming up shortly, probably the next week or two. Um, but I can't tell you the date yet, obviously. I haven't even opened the game to see how much uh, work is involved sorting it. But some people have told me it's taken like six hours to sort through the game. And if it's anything like Gloomhaven, that took me like a two-day process of driving around finding storage solutions and, and, you know, cutting plastic and things to make this game playable on stream to be able to set up multiple sessions in the same day to play with friends. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah. Oh, Stephen Mill says the UK only has game fulfilled with add-ons still to come. Uh, I did get the solo scenarios. I got the solo scenarios. That's the only other thing that I think I purchased. I think other than the foreteller stuff, I think. I'd have to go back and look, but I got this in the box with it, and this is the frost saving, I'm assuming. Um, so yeah, here, I guess I can... <sighs> oh, I'll push that out of the way for now. <laughs> oh, man. So hello, everybody. Hello to you joining live. Hello to you joining later. Thanks again, everyone, for the support. Thanks for hanging out. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to those watching live. Um, oh, yeah, I should do a poll, right? I should do a poll. I am curious for those here. I want to do a poll. Uh, I forgot to do that before. Uh, okay, I put a poll in the live chat. If you're watching live, you can go into the chat and vote. I don't know. I think those are three good options. I'm asking, did you get your copy of Frost Haven yet? Uh, just out of curiosity. So 
yes, no, you haven't got it yet, or you don't plan on buying it or didn't buy it or anything like that. So I'm just curious, just curious. We'll leave that up for a while um, as people roll into the stream. Um, but yeah, Mr. Wilson reveals, yes, tool time. No, what's that show called again? With like the t Tim, the tool man, Taylor, right? Tool time was the show in the show. I don't remember the name. I don't remember the name, but I know what you mean. You mean the neighbor, Mr. Wilson, looking over the fence. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Home improvement. Home improvement. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name. Oh. And what was his sidekick? His sidekick was like Al, right? The guy with the beard and he always like trolled him and stuff. Yeah, I remember watching that show. I remember watching that show. That was before uh, he became Santa Claus, right? <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Home improvement. Wow. That's a blast from the past. Holy. How we do it is watching our Game of Thrones second edition playthrough because I'm trying to get a group together to play this. That's, that's awesome. Those are very old videos on the channel, I'm sure. Not the best quality, of course. Things have advanced. Time has moved on. We've learned some things around here. Uh, but hopefully it helps you. Hopefully it helps you get ready for it. That is one of my favorites. Yeah, D. Miller, uh, uh, I saw, I actually got emails like a month or so ago from Canadian retailer and a uh, U.S. retailer that I'm just on their mailing list for saying that they already had copies of Frosthaven ready to buy. And I was sitting here like, uh, I haven't even got a shipping notification yet. That's kind of, kind of sus. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, you're not the only one to, um, be able to pick up a retail copy well before, you know, half the people were, uh, fulfilled on the Kickstarter that we all paid good money for shipping on. Ross says, Rob won't unbox the game until we get hundred likes. I'm, I'm just killing some time until, uh, everyone kind of rolls in because like, you know, the notification goes out and not everyone can drop what they're doing. So if I wait a few minutes, usually people show up. Um, but in the meantime, let's talk about a couple things. Let's talk about a couple things. Um, let's go here. So uh, basically last time, um, last time uh, for Gloomhaven, I tried to figure out a storage solution. I went online and I found something on BoardGameGeek called a yet another storage solution, Y-A-S-S. -S. So this time I searched Frosthaven. I Googled Frosthaven, Y-A-S-S, -S, yes, yet another storage solution. And sure enough, the same model of Plano boxes, which I didn't have any spares though, I use them for other board games, but I have linked it down in the video description uh, here. Oh yeah, for those who don't know, this is Frosthaven by Cephalofair Games. I should've went over this first. 4.13 complexity. It somehow reached 699 overall already and like nobody has their game yet. I don't know, I don't know how that's happening. Uh, rabid fan base that love interacting with BoardGameGeek more than other games, obviously. Um, but, uh, Google this or find this. The link is down in the video description. This is what I'm using. I just need a quick way to sort monsters. Usually we leave the game open. Gloomhaven stayed open for like a year until we moved in the middle of our playthrough series that you can watch uh, links in the video description if you want to watch us play Gloomhaven Physical, Gloomhaven Digital, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. All our playthrough stuff is linked also down below in the video description. But, um, I was able to find uh, some Plano containers. These are Plano boxes that in Canada that were different size because when Gloomhaven came out, they went out of stock everywhere in Canada where I live. So I had to use some different models. So I was like cutting plastic and making my own. Um, but this time, because not everyone has their copy yet, I quickly went on Amazon and ordered uh, some of these Plano boxes and they came in a four pack. So I have two extras now that I'll use for other games later, I'm sure. Um, but on here, uh, this person made some images and you can print the PDFs of these. Don't print the Im Im imager files. Print the PDFs. Okay, print the PDFs. If you're going to do this. Okay. Because in, in the storage solution in the game box, supposedly it doesn't have a way to store monsters very well. Um, and or tiles. So I use this. And you just print it out. I just printed a color printer. I went, I went to the print shop and printed a couple color pages and then just tape them in the lid. I just use some clear tape to tape them in the lid. And then I, I, I put in the little dividers. You can customize it. 
And I'm going to sort the monsters in there later today or tomorrow when I'm, uh, actually Sunday probably, when I'm punching out um, all the cardboard. And uh, two, two planos will fit all the monsters, uh, supposedly. So I've already done some pre-work to help speed up the process. Um, so that was a little project I was working on yesterday. And then um, for the tiles, um, so what I was saying, we don't usually pack away Gloomhaven. When we opened Gloomhaven, we had a spare table that everything stayed spread out on. And we used to have friends come over and play with us like three sessions in a day. So we had to, we had to be able to switch out tiles and set up the game pretty quick and not have to sit there rummaging through the box and stuff. And we don't put it back in the box. So I don't care if it fits. I don't care if it fits. And I'll just throw it out after we're done playing it. Don't care, right? Um, or until we're bored of it or don't want to play it anymore, which totally could happen. Um, so we also use this accordion folder to store map tiles in. You know, we've got the letters on here with Mel's nice writing. And we just store the tiles in like an accordion folder. So I have an accordion folder ready. So when we quickly need to put away or set up a scenario, we can just grab, grab, grab and throw it out, right? Um, but we did when we moved. Um, we had to put the game away to then move. So uh, that was an interesting thing. Um, but Frosthaven, I don't plan on putting it away. So we're going to set up... Uh, I, have a shel I have shelves where like I can clear off some space right near the board game streaming table here. And we're going to literally just spread out everything on there and it's going to stay out and open while we play through the whole game live for you guys over the next months or year or whatever. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in watching playthroughs of this game live and you want to join us in the chat and hang out with another uh, uh, other crazy Gloomhaven fans uh, as we play through it and want to play along with us and help us make suggestions and vote on polls for road and city events and those kind of things, help us build up our village or city or whatever. Um, yeah, join us for that. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Uh, I'll put the playlist link down below once we start getting some episodes scheduled. Uh, I'll put that down uh, in the video description for this video or just check our playlist section and you'll find it eventually, uh, probably in a few days or, or a week from now-ish. I'll wait till Mel's like kind of done painting the first six before we lock it in. Um, and we got to obviously learn the game and, and play the game off stream a little bit just to like warm up and, and that kind of thing. Make sure we know what we're doing on the first uh, couple episodes. But again, you guys can join us live. Uh, that's the difference this time. Gloomhaven, we played recorded. Um, we, we didn't do that one live. Um, so this time we're doing it live. So it's going to be a little different. We did Jaws of the Lion live. Um, so it'll be similar to that. If you go watch that series or you've watched that series in the past, that's similar to how we're going to do it this time. We might have other players joining us in throughout with the jump in, jump out mechanics. Um, but that's the plan. That's the plan. But I just want to go over that storage solution because people are going to ask. So that's going to be doing off stream before we play it. So Mel's, I'm going to prime the minis later today. As soon as we're done this stream, I'm going to prime them so Mel can paint them. And then I'm going to punch out all the cardboard and sort it out over the weekend uh, between other streams and stuff. Uh, and that's what I'm sorting it into, I'm assuming. Because I know there's an insert with the game that kind of stores stuff already. So I'm kind of excited for that. Similar to Jaws of the Lion, I think. Um, so yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Gigi says, uh, Frosthaven should be pretty easy to learn. Should be. But remember, we play lots of other games on the channel of varying complexities. Uh, higher complexities, lower complexities. Um, and we play them all during the same time. So we'll still be playing games between Frosthaven and stuff. So I've played a lot of other games since I last played Gloomhaven Physical, and since we last played Jaws of the Lion Physical. So I need to like clean out those old bad habits of Gloomhaven and the things that have changed and make sure I learn Frosthaven fresh. So if that makes sense to you. And since I'm doing it on video and stream, I want to kind of really know it. So, you know, you might be like, yeah, it's easy to learn, Rob. You've played hundreds of hours of both those games, but it's like, that might make it actually harder to get it correct, you know? Because uh, they have changed some things, right? So, and we play other games that are similar, like that have similar mechanics and similar wording and rules and stuff that like y I might get wrong and mix up. So Jackpot Man, thank you for the super chat. Congrats on 16K subs. Thank you. And Janet says $10 super chat for your do-it-yourself storage supplies. Yeah, I didn't back any of the official ones. I wasn't really paying attention. There was some drama and things happened where like the insert they were using got canceled and they had to switch to other ones and I didn't add any of them to my my thing. I just knew I already sorted Gloomhaven and it worked for us so that we could get things switched out while we're playing. So if we're streaming, if we're streaming, uh, I can't officially, I can't, if we're playing two scenarios in the same day on stream, if that happens, I want to be able to switch it quickly. And I don't know if an official solution would do it any better. Um, and it would also take more table space up. 
So I like to keep stuff off to the side and some things on the table and I just do it my own way. So I prefer to have control over my storage solution and use what I've learned over the last decade in the hobby and just use Plano boxes, maybe baggies, maybe make my own foam containers, use some game trays, use some E-Raptor card, card holders, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I feel it works pretty good for my table size and my stream setup and to keep it organized. And so between streams, I'm able to swap things out fast and between scenarios, swap things out quick. So we'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes. Um, but thank you. Thank you again for the donation. Janet, thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, other thing, um, a tip, a couple people messaged me. I know Jack, uh, Jack Wilson was one of them, but a couple people told me about an FAQ, uh, is already going and I've already, we've been through Gloomhaven. We've been through Jaws of Lion. I know about playing the game early and, or, or, or when it releases in the first run, and I know there's always going to be issues, right? Um, so I've also linked this below in the video description for those who got the game or getting the game soon, there is a rata. So officially, uh, I guess you get what you pay for sort of, uh, cause we paid less for the game who backed it on Kickstarter cause the MSRP shot through the roof. Right. But then if you're buying it at retail, you're still getting the same print run right now. So you're still getting the same not proofread properly full of errata, the shittiest copy that exists of the game, I guess I would say. Uh, so here's the official FAQ from a non Cephalofair employee. So it's, it's official. It's official. Um, and I don't mind the FAQ part, but the errata part I was looking at, it's, it's kind of disgusting and embarrassing. Um, but if anyone backed the first run of Gloomhaven, I remember this was a thing. Uh, we got the second edition, thankfully. Uh, I wish I backed the second edition of this in the future, but unfortunately I didn't. So I get the worst copy. Um, and anyone who's like, this is, there's game breaking bugs here, supposedly. Um, but yeah, tons of envelopes with things incorrect, misprinted labeled stickers and things. Um, cards, cards that are misprinted, have the wrong icons, setup instructions that are wrong, pictures that are wrong, graphic design that's wrong. Uh, you know, like, look at this, like there's tons, tons of it. Okay. So they delayed it for years. Uh, and this is what still came out at the printer. So that's kind of embarrassing. Uh, this is not a cheap game, by the way. Um, so I guess they cut costs because paper went up, shipping went up. So instead they cut costs on proofreading and still kind of rushed it to the printer. Kind of would have waited a month for this. I, I would have easily waited till like April to have a better quality copy um, with some proper proofreading. Because uh, this is frustrating to me. That, uh, But don't worry, don't worry. Brian, thank you for the super chat. Brian, thank you so much. Uh, but thanks to Janet's $10, uh, I was able to uh, prepare for all this errata. So I also have some supplies. Uh, so to fix the game and all the errata problems, uh, we got some, uh, you know, white paint markers so I can write on cards, okay? And fix the typos on cards and things. I have some sleeves so that the uh, paint and the ink and the, the, you know, the permanent markers and stuff don't wear off. I have some tape, you know, so we can we can fix it. I have some post-it tags that I can put in the rule books and the scenario books, all the incorrect setup instructions and rules and labels. Um, you know, I got sleeves for the small cards too, so that we can, uh, if we write on the permanent marker to change things, the marker won't rub off on our hands or other cards. So uh, additional cost added on to the game. So we may have got a cheaper quality copy um, getting it early, but we also have to spend our own money to fix the game. Um, so I got a permanent marker here. Also got some scissors to cut up some things. We might have to print some um, print some uh, proxies, you know, for our premium board game. You know, premium board game. Uh, we're printing proxies to fix the game. So also, this is part of my solution to get the game to the table. Super happy about that, by the way. Super impressed. Super impressed. Glad, glad I put my money in there. Glad I did. Awesome. Anyways. So yeah, here's the solo scenarios. Uh, we'll just put those aside. Um, other thing, other thing, uh, for those that are curious, looks like I was uh, carton number three, 34,657 of, uh, what is this? One, 110,000, right? The zeros are messing with my eyes looking on the screen, but uh, I'm like trying to count the zeros. How many zeros? Uh, but it's supposedly one unit and uh, what the unit it is. Holy, it's huge. Oh, and it's heavy. Uh, weight, 
16.2 kilograms. What is that? What is that in pounds? Just out of curiosity. 16.2 kg to LBS. 35 freaking pounds? What the hell? What the hell? Uh, anyone work at McDonald's uh, know the weight of a, a box of frozen fries? Wasn't that around like 30 something pounds? Or maybe it was 20 something. <clears throat> but yeah, I used to work at McDonald's back in my younger days unloading trucks. Um, I remember unloading the trucks uh, for the deliveries. And uh, the fry boxes, you'd have to unload like 80 fry boxes every week kind of idea. Um, and they're pretty heavy. Yeah, lift it with your legs. Or don't lift it at all, actually. Just leave it on your front porch. Walk away. It's not worth it. Um, but yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, jeez. That is heavy. That is heavy. Oh, man. Yeah, minion number two. That is embarrassing the amount of errata. Uh, and that it could be in a, gr that is a growing list. It was updated even yesterday. It was updated even yesterday. And I have linked it down below. I, I have linked it down below if anyone wants to look up. There is there is good FAQ stuff. I haven't read through it all, but there is some good stuff about like clarifying what you should do with certain cards and things people have run into and stuff the rule book doesn't answer or confusing writing on cards. But I remember when we got into Gloomhaven 2nd Edition, when we started playing it, it was like a 70-something page FAQ. Bigger than the rule book itself. That's how confusing the game was. Um, and how lackluster the rules were and how poor the design was and the templating and yeah, so I expect the same here. They obviously just didn't learn anything um, But I can just keep scrolling. I don't know how many pages this is. It's just a post, right? But it keeps going. It keeps going It keeps going It keeps going This game is a monster though. There's a ton of info in here. So you're expecting like if they made it not clear in one class and, and it's used again in other classes, like the problem's gonna like replicate itself. You know, if it got by one person at the company, it's gonna like get in, into everything, if that makes sense. But yeah, scrolling. Oh, oh, there we go, we stopped. All right, there we go. All right, so yeah, there's a link down below, go check it out. It, it just updated yesterday, right? Just updated yesterday. Uh, yeah. Yeah, today's the 17th, right? Yeah, just updated yesterday. So they've added new stuff to this or they keep updating it. So this is awesome. This is awesome. And here's the list of stuff. Hopefully they make an official like PDF, um, you know, cleaned up and stuff. But anyway, it's on BoardGameGeek.com. Hopefully that's helped. Oh, Brian, thank you for the super chat. Uh, sorry. Um, here's the super chat from a Brian who spells his name correctly. Oh, shots fired. Shots fired. Listen, I don't need Brian's fighting here, okay? So Brian's with an I and Brian's with a Y. Can't we all just get along? Can't we all just get along? Please. Please. Uh. Oh, Mark C's box was 54 pounds with everything from the Kickstarter. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is just the, the retail game, I think. Madara was 24 pounds. Even Reynolds says that's 120 quarter pounders. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a, a great way to measure things. Quarter pounders. Spencer has been a member for 21 months. Cheers to Frosthaven. Thank you so much for the long-term support, Spencer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ray of Shine, member for 13 months. Cheers. Thank you so much for the long-term support. Part of the Gold Die Club. Love it. Love it. Love it. So yeah, we finally got our copy. Oh, oh, listen, listen, Brian, relax, okay? Let's not team up on the other Brian's, okay? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, at least there is an FAQ, that's true. That's the positive side to look at it, yep. It's the, I don't care about the FAQ part, but it might help you, but it's big. So just go check it. But the errata part is what, what grinds my gears. The errata part, like that much errata. Like, I don't mind missing something here and there, but like, it's not like they rushed the game out. They took extra time, they delayed it. It's not like this is the first time making this game. 
they just literally had a lot to work from, from Gloomhaven. They, I think, used similar monsters, similar templating. Like, they've learned a ton from different printings of Gloomhaven over the years. And Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion and the fan feedback and, you know, complaints and errata than misprintings and reprintings. Like, they've been through it before. This is not their first game. So, that just bugs me. But anyways, enough of that. Enough of that. And it's not negativity, by the way, and those who comment later, it's me being critical, and, and I, I paid money for this, and I'm not impressed, okay? I just feel a little, like, uh, kind of jaded. And I'm allowed to, because I voted with my wallet, and I'm allowed to speak my opinion. You can have your own opinion. Um, both don't matter, um, as long as you're having fun. But anyways. Alright. Let's, uh... Let's get to it. Alright. Anything else going on here? Also, why am I not? There it is. Now I hear the alert. All right. Pontus has been a member for 11 months. Ooh, 11 months. One more month to the anniversary. <laughs> hey. Gold die coming soon. Nice. Thank you so much, Pontus, for long-term support. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Thank you, everyone, for supporting the channel. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I'm sorry it took so long to get Frosthaven even on the channel. Um, and it's still not even on the channel yet, technically. All right. Are we ready for an unboxing? Do we have enough people here yet? Hold on. We have 113 people watching and only 43 likes. I guess you guys don't like it until you see the game uh, unboxed. Is that the thing? You don't like this pre-rant, do you? You don't like the pre-info. I'm trying to give info to help you guys. A link to the FAQ. My storage solution in case you didn't get an official one or you don't know what to do with your monsters and your tiles and stuff. And just to answer that. Also, the errata stuff. How I'm going to fix the errata by writing on cards and sleeving and printing and all the stuff that I usually do to fix games and, and, and post-it note tags in the books. Um, hopefully that information helped you. And then with a little bit of ranting on the side, as we usually do here. I gotta be critical. I, I gotta be honest, okay? Um. <laughs> oh, Jack says I was gonna like, then I saw the kissing face. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, that's fine. You click the dislike button. Uh, that is okay, too. Uh, as long as you're interacting with the video in some way, Google uh, likes that, and YouTube will promote it with the algorithm. So, however, if you, you know, you dislike, like it, comment, whatever, chat, you know, share it to friends. All this stuff helps the channel. Um, so yeah, click the dislike too. That's totally fine. I just don't see the numbers for that, unfortunately. Um, so I can't see how angry you guys are. But you can just tell me in the chat. 70 likes? Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Tobold, I am trying not to make it a six hour unboxing stream. 30 minutes to get into it with intro and everything, explaining things and sharing information. I know not everyone will watch to the end, and I wanted to get some info out to help people at the start. So then you can all screw off and, and not have to worry those who don't care about watching me, like, look at the box and stuff. You know, who are just here going, when are you playing it? When are you playing it? And probably not this weekend, probably next weekend for those that are interested. But again, I might be sorting it out till 2027 based on the, the weight of this thing. Uh, I might be punching cardboard for another year or so, sorting it all out, so we'll see. Are we ready? Are six hours or longer? Oh man, six hours, why the rush, says Fontis. Okay, are we ready? Oh, let's close the poll. Let's see what you guys voted on the poll. I'm curious, before we get into the unboxing. <laughs> I'm closing the poll. Thank you everyone that voted, all 126 of you, I appreciate it. So I asked in the chat, uh, for those watching later, or those watching live who don't have access to the chat, you're watching on a TV or something, uh, did you get your copy of Frosthaven? Those watching, 36% said yes, 34% said no, 29% said don't plan on buying it. Okay, so roughly half the people who are watching who backed it have even got their copy. So I'm like in the middle, I guess. So I'm not at the late end, I guess, so that's pretty cool. Not. But there is a lot of copies. I know you can't ship them all out in a day. I'm not complaining about that part. Um, I'm just complaining because, like, you know, I backed this Kickstarter. They said the game was pretty much almost done and it would be out, like, within a year and blah, blah, blah. During COVID. Like, okay. Okay. All right. Let's unbox this thing. Are you ready? 
Gotta be careful with the knife, though, that I don't cut the box. The box in the box. What's in the box? This is, like, so awkwardly big. Oh. I want to click anything by accident. What oh, was there an up update coming out soon? Uh, I was wondering if Frosthaven is much better than Gloomhaven. Is it worth playing? Does it look like I've played Frosthaven to describe to you if it's better to buy? I'm literally opening it right now. Why are you asking such silly things? Ah, ah. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Sort of. Not really, though. Uh, oh, you played Jaws the Lion. So, what you should do, just look up what the differences are. Uh, maybe you can find, like, a nice write-up on BGG in the forums just explaining the differences. Um, like, the added town mechanic and, like, anything has changed or improved. I just haven't played it yet, so you're gonna have to ask me in about a year once I played a bunch of it, and then I'll tell you. But, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, we'll give it a smell. Ooh. Asking me in an unboxing stream if they should buy the game. Jeez Louise. That's an answer only you can answer. Or a question only you can answer. Oh no, it's upside down. Oh my god. Oh my god. I almost had to end the stream right there. Technical difficulties. Uh, Mr. Suitcase asks, sorry if I missed earlier, but did you get through the usual Kickstarter distribution to Canada? Yes. I backed this game just like, uh, you know, any other board gamer. I backed it on Kickstarter. We did it on stream. We live streamed. We went over the Kickstarter on launch day. We backed it. Thank you again for everyone who donated to support it. Um, and we just got it yesterday. Just arrived yesterday, late yesterday. So, uh, and we're in Canada. Yes, we're in Canada. If that helps anybody. Um, and Canadian distribution started like the week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, literally six weeks ago it started and I just got mine now. So even Canadians, I'm getting it weeks and weeks later. And not to mention, like, later than, you know, U.S. and stuff like that. To some people in the U.S., obviously. Not everyone has it. All right. Ooh. Yeah, this is crazy. Oh, my God. All right. I officially need a new table. I think I just heard it break. I'm just kidding. All right. I expected foam pads uh, in the corners, but they just used more cardboard. That's interesting. I expected to see like the foam, you know, protectant. Oh, they don't even use shrink wrap. Oh, this is heavy. Well, we're starting out with the back of the box. <laughs> Whoops, wrong button. Oh, that's the right button. <laughs> Brian S says, yes, you got the upside down version of the game. Think of the resell value of that. Millions, yes. Les says, it's a shame that dry ice didn't smoke out from the box opening. Yeah, what the hell is with that? Didn't I pay for that upgrade on Kickstarter? Damn it. Returning it. Oh, so Cobras was in shrink? I don't think mine has shrink on it. No, look. It's just tape. Just tape. Huh. Waiting for the box for it? All right. It says, welcome to Frosthaven. The only output post in the unforgiving north is on the brink of destruction. Carried by vicious, mysterious threats on all sides, Frosthaven would need great warriors and leaders to survive the coming winter. Unfortunately, all it has is you, a group of haunted wanderers with nowhere left to go. Can you fight back the invaders and build the thriving community, or will the Frost claim it all? So according to this, I don't know if I can get closer here. Oh yeah, well, that's kind of closer, right? Um, 138 scenarios. Wow. Wow, 17 playable classes, over 2,500 cards, 64 different enemy types, an evolving map board, 18 mediocre plastic miniatures, and Frosthaven is a cooperative campaign game of tactical combat and branching narratives in a unique fantasy world. You will take your party of hardened mercenaries through a vast series of scenarios offering deep gameplay without dice against fully automated enemies. It's just paper dice, uh, by the way. It's not without dice technically. It's like still the randomization of a card deck you can modify. So it's kind of like just playing with, a, with dice, but you can change the sides of them, which is kind of cool. 
Um, along the way, you will build up the outpost of Frosthaven, protecting its citizens from attacks through a multitude of useful structures. Inevitably, your mercenaries will retire, and you will continue the adventure, assuming you're having fun, by selecting new characters from the 17 different classes available. The possibilities of the North are near endless, and it's just waiting to be explored. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh! Yeah. One to four players. Now, is there true solo in this? Or is it still you have to run two characters? And is this just BS? Does it have true solo? Or is it only these solo scenarios again? Or did, did they cheese us? Like, are they just lying to sell more copies again? Oh, George says small spoiler. At least minis are at least decent comparing to Gloom and Jaws of Lion. Oh, they did they did make better minis? Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay. Two characters required? That's not true solo then. That's not true solo. It should say two to four players then. Yeah, that's right. I said it. 30 minutes per player. Takes 30 minutes to choose an upgrade card. What are they talking about? <laughs> Uh, age 14 plus, supposedly. Ooh. Okay. Gigi says, I think one character solo would be a bit too simple anyway. What? What the hell does that even mean? So you're saying when four people are at the table playing the game and each play person is playing one character, that's too simple? What are you saying? Or you just mean the puzzle of interacting between the characters, right? It is more fun when you have two characters, like, interacting. I agree. Uh, when I played it digitally, it was not bad playing with, like, two or three characters, you know? Um, so I agree that, if that's what you mean. But then you're just saying, like, one person playing one character is too simple. I don't think so. I have plenty of fun playing this game two and three players with just one character in front of me. But yeah. Untape first, Edgar. Okay. <laughs> Untape first, awesome, okay uh, Yeah, I'll just cut the tape Yeah, you make sense, because I've done that before I try to lift the lid, not understanding Because there's no shrink on it, I think I'm good Alright Oh, jeez Oh, yeah Yogi Bear says, I get a headache just playing one character. I could not play this game solo. I wouldn't play the physical game with two characters, but when eventually, if they have digital Frost Haven, sign me up. I will play that solo with two characters because the game handles, like, manages a lot of the stuff, so it's easy to keep track of things and saves you time and stuff from, like, you know, fiddling with all the, all the game, you know? Yeah, Mr. Suitcase says 30 minutes per player is referring to the setup time. Apophenia Vol says, Game speed is always judged off of a group of experienced players who pay attention and focus. Bracket, so nobody. <laughs> oh, man. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I can move the camera. Yes, Jackpot Man. I see what you're saying. Yeah, on, on YouTube, uh, the TV app puts the chat on the right, right? Right, wrong, right, right. Something like that. I can get the box out of the way. Is that better? Rob, get a second copy and uh, and you're gonna work and you're gonna so your work out your work your day workout will be like a charm. It will be oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like, get a second copy so I can just, like, lift it up and down the stairs and, you know, put it on my on my body and then, like, do crunches with it on it and, like, get super buff. <laughs> I agree, Brian. It's better to have two Robs. Yeah, digital is going to be out in a long time in the future, but it'll probably still be before we even get to Scenario 10 at the rate we play. Um... Les is asking, with a huge games like this, how long do you leave it set up on the table? Days, weeks, or months? A couple of people answered in the chat, months. Like I said, when we played the Gloomhaven, the first version of this game, 
Uh, we literally left it on a table for probably almost two years. We just moved in the middle of it, so we had to like pack it up and then re-unbox it onto the table. But we literally leave all the components spread out. I never put it back in the box. I don't travel with it. And if I had to pull it all out of the box again and again, I would not want to play it. I would not want to set it up. It's just too much. So I like having everything spread out, all the tiles in an accordion folder. I've already talked about at the start of the stream. Uh, everything organized in plano boxes. All the monster types, you know, all the tokens, the cards, everything like that. Um, so I can just grab at it quickly and we can get set up and playing and put away as fast as possible. Again, if they had a digital copy of this already, I would have sold this copy and not played it physically, honestly. It's just that fiddly and too much setup and tear down and all that. But it is fun. I do love the gameplay, though. I do love the gameplay, so that's what makes it worth it for me. But yeah, I'll, I'm going to have a couple shelves beside the table here where I just leave it all out and it's all spread out. The box will be just thrown away into storage uh, until I want to put it, put it away if we need to move or something. That's it. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, there's 138 scenarios in here, it said. But you don't play all of them, probably. There's probably branching paths and stuff. But easily, the main story in the original Gloomhaven was like, I don't know how many scenarios. 30-something, 50-something. And there was like 98 scenarios or something in the whole box. Not to mention randomly generated scenarios you could do. So if you want to play through the whole game, it's like kind of like a sandbox RPG game. Like a video game, you know, where like like we're playing a Hogwarts Legacy recently on the channel, or Zelda Breath of the Wild, or Skyrim, whatever video game. It's like that. There's like a main quest line, and then there's tons of side quests. You can go get loot, find characters, uh, do side story stuff, or do the main story, and then you choose different options and branch paths and stuff. I assume they're doing the same thing in here. I assume they're doing the same thing in here. Um, but yeah, it's like that kind of game. So literally, if you played it once a week with friends. It could take you a year to get through like the main story with a few side quest stories in between, right? 52-ish weeks in a year, you know? Like depending on how much you're gaming and holidays and stuff. With setup time, teaching, all that stuff, you know? Picking characters, upgrade cards, you know? Making choices of battle goals and things. Yeah, it's a pretty beefy game. You'll see. You'll see. All right. Okay. Uh, so, um, at this point, um, basically because of the, uh, how the community around this game and the Gloomhaven community is, um, I said I was going to make this uh, video 100%, 100, 100%, 100 spoiler free. No spoilers. And because this box is so full of spoiler cards, and envelopes and spoiler tiles and, and spoiler packs and spoiler cardboard and spoiler tokens. Um, yeah, that's me unboxing it. Uh, I took it out of the cardboard box. Here's the game. This is the game. So the rest of it I'm gonna do off stream um, because I don't wanna spoil anything for anybody because the game is so full of spoilers and people don't even like to see symbols of classes and stuff. Um, so yeah, so if you wanna see any spoilers, tune in for our playthrough of the game. We're gonna play through live each week. Um, and you can see tons of spoilers then for those that want spoilers, but I said I was going to keep today's unboxing spoiler free. So there you go. That's, uh, that's Frosthaven. Okay, there, I unboxed Frosthaven. Anyways, thank you everyone for your support. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the playthroughs. Bye-bye.